visitor, the curious one who peers into the private lives of people around the world. Tonight, he rides his magic carpet halfway across the globe to once proud Prague, the captive capital of satellite Czechoslovakia, to the office of a minor public official, a man who thinks he can make a compromise with life. Yaramov in Vesely's office, if you need me. Your quarterly report. Yes? Excellently written, as always. Thank you, Comrade Colonel. However, Vesely, in your district, only 27 people were arrested for their negative attitude to the new state. Well, there were no others who deserved to be arrested. Deserved? I should be amused, but I'm not. Your quota is 100 quarterly. My quota, Colonel? I have here a letter from General Velke himself. Our mines and road building camps are badly undermanned. It is imperative that we get more prisoners, at least 400 annually from every district. General Velke, as usual, clear and concise. I'd have to arrest innocent people to fill my quota. But Vesely. You are, I believe, a communist. It's a rhetorical question, Colonel. Exactly. Therefore, you believe in world revolution. And then you believe in its basic uh, principle. The greatest good for the greatest number. Can there be any question? That is the point. The question is not its overt act, but in the inner mind. With the urgency of the present day, even thinking improperly can become a crime against the state. Does that apply to me and to you? Don't you think so? Well, uh, if we believe with history that the idea forges the sword, yes, I believe so. You and I, Jan, can be hurled into the pit by the simplest accusation, the simplest inference to weak or antagonistic thinking. Yes, I agree. But to arrest innocent people, people against whom we can make no real accusation and throw them into labor camps. Have you forgotten the starvation of the Kulaks in Russia 20 years ago? No, of course not. The greatest second small farmers eliminated for the good of the state. And you worry about filling your little quota for the good of the world revolution. I'm sorry, Governor. Well, General Velke will get his men one way or another. If necessary, from the ranks of inefficient public servants like me or you. still have that bottle in your desk drawer? Oh, no, comrade. I threw that away when you caught me refreshing myself. You told me that drinking on the job was a crime against the state. Well, it's too bad. Right now I could do with a little refreshment myself. Uh, you do look tired. I thought your office was safer. Oh, thank you. Brahaska, how long have you worked here? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five? Thirty-five years and three systems. The old, the capitalistic one, the Germans, and, and you. What do you think of us? I am a faithful citizen of the new people's democracy. I know what you are. But what do you think? I uh, gave up thinking when the Germans came. I couldn't think and live at the same time. That's when I took up this, a great invention, the anti-thinking medicine. I, I'll wash out these glasses. Oh, if only a man didn't have to think. 
Headache, darling. Yeah. Lean back. Now, relax. You don't belong in that job, Jan. <laughs> My personal happiness doesn't matter where the party is concerned. Party? The party. I cursed the day you joined it. Anna, how can you say such a thing? Well, you know exactly why I joined the party and where and when. Of course, darling, I know. It was at that Nazi camp. When the Russians freed us. I know, dear. You don't have to tell me. We went out to kiss the hands of our liberators. Those of us who could still walk. Darling, please. After five years of hating the Nazis, five years of hungering for justice and freedom, how can I believe in anything but the World Revolution, anything but the Communist Party? But you didn't promise anybody to get them a quota of slave labor. This quota thing is just an exception. It is an abuse of power, but it has nothing to do with the idea itself. Hasn't it? What is the idea itself? Justice. Life. The greatest good for the greatest number. And is it the greatest good for our own checks to be arrested without charges, shipped off to a slave labor camp in Russia? Anna, be quiet. All right. Oh, Jan. Jan resigned from that terrible job. And you what? weren't born to do this. What then? Shine boots, dig trenches. Anything would be better than being an accomplice of these despicable little Hitlers. Anna, what are you trying to do to me? You want me to say that I have thrown away my whole life? It would be like committing suicide. And let me tell you something. Last week, I ran into Mrs. Martichek, the wife of the old doctor. What's one old man's liberty compared to the common good? This one old man died after two weeks in one of your camps. Overwork and starvation. You still refuse to admit you were wrong? Is it right to be a murderer? Then... Anna, I'm sorry. What's this? The party ring. The sickle and hammer. You look like a man who took an overdose of anti-thinking medicine. Ah. Here's the dossier on those new cases. Five of them. Leave it for my successor. Oh, comrade prosecutor, you won't... I will. The arm off will get my resignation today. Get out, get out. Well, have you been thinking? Yes. Good, I've come to be of help. The yeah, R.M. out in Vesley's office if you need me. Colonel, I... I don't like to be interrupted. You know Comrade Klatzboff? Public prosecutor of District 3? A very smart fellow. The only one of you who exceeded his quota. Want to know how he did it? Yes. He found a way to discover rebellious thoughts. Rebellious thoughts? without waiting for people to act or even to speak. He invited a doctor, a psychiatrist living in his district, and made him talk about his patients. Well, the famous Professor Waldeck lives right here in your district. Yes, I know. But he may not want to talk about his patients. Want? Vesely, what's the matter with you lately? I beg your pardon. I didn't like what you just said, and I didn't like the way you said it, and I don't like the way you're looking at me now. Comrade Colonel. You're a friend of Carl Fobach's, aren't you? Captain Fobach, of course. We went to college together. Have you seen him lately? No, not lately. I've been too busy. He's on his way to the mining district with his wife. What did he do? He had the impertinence to send his resignation to his superiors. <laughs> Never what you might call a cheerful person. He always worried too much. Not about himself, but about his fellow man. He hated injustice and brutality. He used to go out of his way to help others. He was good and warm and kind. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Yes? Professor Valdek. 
Now, this is Professor Valbeck speaking. This is Jan Vesely, Public Prosecutor, District 17. I want to see you in my office today. It's important. But uh, I'm, I'm extremely busy today. I... This is state business. What sort of business? We'll discuss that here in my office. You're not to mention this to anyone. I expect you immediately. <laughs> I will not take your no for an answer, Professor. I consider the oath of Hippocrates as secret as that of a priest. You wouldn't ask him to divulge the secrets of confession. How do you know I wouldn't? I'm sure your father was a religious man. Leave my father out of this. As you say, let's talk about you. Thirty years in practice has taught me to read faces. You're not here to read my face. But I like to. It's the face of a good man. Shut up! Your hands are trembling. You are ill. Let me feel your pulse. Now you felt my pulse. Yes. And now I understand many things. You are ill. It's not your body, it's your mind. And what you are doing now is even worse. How dare you! Sit down. Sit down! Your case, Mr. Vesely, is not a unique one. There's a whole generation of your kind living among us right now. A generation of those who wasted the best years of their life in Nazi camp. And now, what are you doing? You're wasting the rest of your life by repaying those who have liberated you. How do you know? Did anyone tell you about me? When you are young, you don't enjoy life like others do. You worry too much. Not about yourself. But about your fellow man, you hate injustice and brutality. You're good and warm. Leave me alone. Then comes the day when the Pied Piper takes advantage of your goodness. Beautiful words, justice, equality, opportunity for all. You believe in him. You're like a man in trance. The end, you say, justify the means. But this isn't the end of you and your kind. Your end, Mr. Vesely, is the padded cell. Passport office. Hello. Oh, oh Melnick. Yeah, this is Vesely. Well, you know, about as usual. Look, Melnick, I need a passport for my wife. A doctor's orders, he has to be a specialist in Paris. No, no, just for herself alone. Well, uh, I'd like to, but you know how it is. Sometimes it's a nuisance being an official. Besides, I'd have to get special permission from Yarmouth. Yeah, yeah, we sure do know Yarmouth. I've resigned. Oh, Jan! How did Yarmolov take it? Well, I could hardly believe my ears. He seemed to understand me. He even sympathized with me. He picked up the phone, telephoned a friend of his in the foreign office. Well, what did he say? Well, my friend, he said, I've just suffered a severe loss. I've lost my best man. And then he told him all about me, my background, my knowledge of foreign languages, and so oh, on. Oh, Jan, don't tell yes, me. Yes, Mrs. Attaché. From next week on, I'm a member of our Paris Embassy. And what's more, you're leaving tonight. Well, you better get going. Come on. Your plane leaves in less than an hour. My plane? That's what I said. But why do I have to go without you? Because when I follow you next week, 
I'll find a desk full of a thousand papers in Paris. I won't have time to look around for a place to live. And you better see to it that everything is in tip-top shape when I get there. I will. Oh, Jan. Oh, come on, get packed. Prosecutor, District 17. I want you to keep me posted on Flight 6 to Paris. When is the plane due over the French border? Soon. Soon is a vague word. How soon? All right. Call me back. Colonel Yaramov is here. Tell him to wait. Colonel Yaramov? Tell him to wait. here until I call you, then follow my orders implicitly. Yes, Comrade Prosecutor. No matter how surprising, my orders are to be followed. Yes, Comrade. Airport? Yes? Colonel Yaramov is quite annoyed. In a few minutes. Well, call me back when you're certain. men's minds work in the same exact way. Uh, Colonel Yaramov is... is waiting. Yes, I know. I'm waiting, too. Oh. oh, have patience, Prohaska. You won't have to put up with my eccentricities much longer. This is my last day as public prosecutor. I'm giving Yaramov my resignation. You're signing your own death certificate. Perhaps. But... I'm not afraid. Why should you be? That is the easy way. Easy way? To die? Easy. It's nothing. Everyone dies. May I speak? Of course. May I speak as one who has lived enough years to be your father? For 35 years, I have worked in this office. Under the Republic, the Nazis, and... Uh, and... us. Yes. 35,000 times I have wanted to resign and go away to a farm or work as a waiter in a nice cafe. Once I could have gone to England. You didn't go? No. The fighting is to be done here. Right here in Prague. Fighting? More important than with guns. Uh, Mr. Grakosi, the poet, uh, you committed him to a mining camp. I must tell you, Grakosi is safe in Western Germany. Safe? But how? Uh, the orders were lost into the flames, just as you did a moment ago. And that is fighting, in a way. And just like Grakosi, there are many others. Zvernik, Tanuk, and his brother-in-law, Rakovsky. Many, many others. The same way I fought when the Germans were here. But could I fight from a farm, or from a cafe, or from England? This is my country. I will fight here. I consider it a foolish impertinence to keep me waiting. A personal matter, Colonel. The people's government does not appoint its civil officials to waste time on their personal matters. Yes? Yes, this is Public Prosecutor Vesely. It has crossed the French border. Thank you. You're right, Colonel. No more personal matters. Who was that on the telephone? What crossed the French border? 
It was a personal matter. And as you say, Colonel, we must forget them. Now, on to the vital matters of the people's government. Praska. Yes, Comrade Prosecutor. Your note for pencil. Ready, Comrade Prosecutor. For General Velke, from Public Prosecutor, District 17. General. It is with deep shame that I submit the name of the following political traitor. Traitor should be denounced with pride. Praska, change that to deep pride. For days, he's been deviating from the ideals of the people's government. His thoughts have been treasonous. Who is this man? I myself have heard him utter such capitalistically inspired phrases as democracy is decency. There should be free speech and press, freedom of thought for the individual. And more than this, General Belke, he has engineered the escape of the following political prisoners. Escaped? Who escaped? Why wasn't I told? Grakosi. Schwernick, Tannock, Rykowski. No punishment can be too severe for this confirmed enemy of the people. Who is this man? I demand to know his name. And he is the more to be despised because he held a position of high authority and trust. Respectfully, Jan Vestman. Jan, I must commend you for your devotion to the cause. Your zeal is admirable. However, I do not like to be ignored when I ask a question. For Oscar, add a notation to the fact that while being arrested for treason, Colonel Yarimov praised... Arrested? You're mad. Praised the district prosecutor for the execution of his duties. Guards! Guards, quickly! Arrest that man! It's all right! Ooh. It's all right! He said we'd be surprised at who it was. Braska, add a notation that unfortunately the prisoner offered resistance when approached by the authorities of the people's government. You idiots. Comrades, hold him without communication. <laughs> General Velke's quota for him. You know, Prohaska, you'd be amazed at how many high echelon officers and officials harbor dangerous thoughts. Uh, how much time? Uh, how long before? Before we're caught? A few months, perhaps a year. But what does it matter? So, in the mind of the man who lived in the jungle that is now Czechoslovakia, we find with the visitor that the old basic laws of humanity do not change, that it is still true that a goal, an end no matter how high, does not justify a cruel or ignoble act. Once again, the visitor looks into the private lives and minds of the people behind the closed doors and shuttered windows. He finds out what good or evil exists, what joys and sorrows. Come and join the visitor.